Now let's look at who decides of who does what with those three point Cs. Those are the regulatory bodies. Of course, each country has a regulatory body that decides of what rules should apply to what part of the spectrum. Each country has that. So they decide which frequencies can be used, by whom, with what kind of power, and also what kind of transmission, what sort of wave do you have the right to send, what range, what shape, does it contain data, does it not. So all these rules are defined by the regulatory body in your country. Most of the time, common organizations try to group their rules together because it's an extremely complex field and it's simpler to have rules that apply to more than one country. So we have regions where a typical rule would be applied. For example, the FCC, which is applied in the US, will have its rule that may be applied in many other countries because they just follow the FCC regulations or the FCC rules. In Europe, you have the ETSI that defines a common ground for most of the European countries. Well, some other countries, like Mexico, for example, may be choosing to choose the ETSI rules and follow the ETSI regulations, which makes it simpler for them to modify the rules as the complexity of the spectrum changes, rather than having to decide of their own rules, which are likely to be the same anyway. The one you see here on the side is Telec in Japan. Each country has its own regulatory body, but not all countries have different rules. There may be some common rules from one country to the other. And those rules can be very complex. So in the SCCN exam, you don't need to know all the rules of all the countries, but you need to have this awareness of different rules for different countries, which may have some consequences in some ways uh, you send your ways. For example, this one is a typical one. The FCC has a rule in the 2.4 band that says that if you're designing an outdoor link and that link is a point to multi point, you have the right to change your power at the transmitter and you also have the right to change the gain of your antenna with a specific rule which is called the one to one rule that says that if you decrease your transmit power at the access point by 1 dB, then you can increase your gain of your antenna. You can put another antenna with a gain of 1 dB more. So 1 dB you lose in power, you can gain that power at the antenna level. So that's pretty simple, right? Suppose you have a 20 dBm uh, system on your access point, uh, sending signal out to the uh, antenna. And let's suppose that we don't care about the cable. And suppose that the antenna gain is 3 dBi. So that rule says that if on your transmitter you decrease by 1 dB, I should say you go down to 19 and then you decrease even more to 5 by 15, uh, 15 dB. These 5 dB you removed on the transmitter can be gained on the antenna. So now your antenna, instead of being 3, can be 5 dBi more, which is 8 dBi. So that's the one-to-one -one rule. There is another rule which is for point-to-point -point links. The previous one was for point-to-multi points, where you have an access point somewhere on the building and many other access points around trying to communicate with that hub. But for point-to-point -point links, the rule is different because the FCC thought that that would be probably long-range links maybe across mountains and long distances where you might need more power. So instead of that one-to-one -one rule, in the point-to-point -point links, they use the one-to-three rules. That is to say, every dB you remove at the transmitter can be compensated by three dB gain at the antenna. So that's very different, right? So if you have your same system and still your same 20 dBm on one side and a 3 dBi antenna on the other side, but this time you're designed for a point-to-point, -point, if you change your power at the access point level and now again remove the same 5 dB as you did before, instead of gaining this 5 dB on the other side, for each dB you remove, you can gain 3 dB on the other side, which means that by removing 5 dB, you can add now 15 dB and you result in an 18 dBi access point gain. So you see, depending on where you design your system and what you design it for, the rules might be very different. That's the FCC, which is a fairly complex uh, rule set. For example, in the Etsy domain, which is in Europe, they stipulate a maximum EIRP of 20 dBm. And they say we assume a 17 dBm transmit power and a 3 dB antenna gain. And the rule is simply that every dB you lose on the transmitter, you're going to gain it on the antenna. So it's the one-to-one -one rule, and they don't look into if you're doing a point-to-point -point or a point-to-multi-point link. They just have one single rule. So it's simpler than the FCC, which has two rules depending on what application your outdoor link is supposed to be for.